Hi, I'm Stu from the Natural History Consortium um, and I'm here today in the Gordano Valley to encourage you to get out and record your local wildlife as part of the City Nature Challenge weekend. The City Nature Challenge is a global citizen science project um, taking place across 400 cities across the world including 14 in the UK and including Bristol and Bath which is why I'm here today in the Gordano Valley. Uh, I'm joined today by Louise from Natural England. Hi Louise. Hi Stu. Hi, how are you doing? Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and why we are currently in the Gordano Valley? Yes, of course. So my name is Louise Treneman and I'm a Nature Reserve Manager in the Somerset National Nature Reserves team for Natural England. As an organisation we work to protect and manage a whole host of nature reserves across the country. I'm in charge of the Gordano Valley National Nature Reserve. Although it's not in Bristol or Bath, it is part of the region that is covered by City Nature Challenge. So, you know, you really can get out into rural areas as well as part of your discovering different species and, and clocking up as many as you can. I'm assuming from how squelchy the ground is that this is a wetland. Uh, is this a wetland? And what makes a wetland? <laughs> yes, yeah, you're right in thinking that. This is a wetland site. This whole area of the Gordano Valley is on peat which as we know is very, you know, very wet habitat. We've got mainly wet meadows and we've also got a really important network of ditches which, you know, were put in to drain the land for agriculture historically but now actually have really important plants and sort of invertebrate species growing in them. Um, and that's all the sort of thing you could also possibly see in ponds out mm. on other sites around the area. Cool. Well, shall we take a little walk and go see what we can find and record then? Uh, Louise, you just pointed out uh, this plant. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, so this is meadowsweet. At the moment, it's really quite small, um, but as this sort of growing season, as the spring goes on, those leaves will get a lot bigger. It's, it's one of those plants that you can't miss because of the smell. As you're walking through a wetland, you sort of you'll kick up the smell of it. Um, it smells really sweet, as the name would you know, oh, okay. <laughs> describe. Um, and it's yeah, it's a lovely, and it's it's an easy one to pick out even before it's flowering. Um, it's got a, a sort of a red, a red stem on it and quite distinctive leaves. Yeah. The City Nature Challenge, uh, the way that all the records are done are through the free app called iNaturalist, which can be used on any smartphone, um, and just take a photo of it and upload it so that it's used in the database. So uh, just as we stood up just now, I just noticed all the bird song. Like, what kind of bird is that and what's going to be out um, in late April during the challenge? Yeah, so as spring starts picking up, the birds obviously really start singing as they're starting to establish breeding territories, set up nests, all that sort of thing. What we can hear at the moment, predominantly, is I can hear a chiff chaff, which is a really distinctive bird that you just can't miss. It's, it's you know, it wants to be heard. <laughs> um, and I can also hear a skylark in the background, which are lovely birds. And, and you'll find them not just on wetlands, you know, they, they nest in farmland, all, all sorts of different habitats. Um, and they, they're, they're really distinctive because as they fly up, you know, you might scare them a bit, they'll fly up and they sing as they fly up. And just this really lovely song that you, you'll hear as you go around. Other birds you get sort of more specifically in a, in a wetland, you might get little, little things like reed warblers, which nest in amongst the reeds. They build these lovely nests where they knit together lots of reeds in a little ball. Um, you might see reed buntings. Um, and, you know, just the, all, the, all the sort of host of normal things that you probably know already, great tits, blue tits, blackbirds, that sort of thing will be through through these sort of scrubby edges along around the wetland as well. Oh, amazing. Cool. Well, hopefully we'll see some of those in a second then. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we've just seen a pair of roe deer run across the field. They're, they're not an issue here. You know, some places you have deer that are a major issue down in the valley here. We see them running around. You, you'll get all sorts of mammals down here. Most of them, you know, you won't see little rodents running around that, that the barn owls are hunting for. But, you know, yeah, moving through the landscape, the roe deer are sort of the easiest ones to spot because they are bigger and, and they all get flushed out as you're walking around. So what are these funky looking plants? <laughs> so this is a yellow flag iris. At the moment, obviously, it's not in flower, but it's still, you know, you can still identify it as an iris. You might have irises in your garden, and it's that same family of plants. Okay. But by the time the challenge comes around, hopefully these should be in flower, and they have a lovely yellow flower, hence the name. You can't miss them. You'll find them in, in ponds. They grow in sort of standing water, as well as around the edge of 
wetlands so so you're quite likely to see them in quite a lot of different places you don't have to be out in a wetland nice fantastic so like for example along the these this ridge here what um kind of things will we be finding in the woodlands say compared to down here what's really nice about the gordano valley is as well as this sort of wet valley bottom you've got here there's also two ridges that run along either side of the valley which are limestone ridges so up there you've got grassland which has really interesting flora there's also ancient woodland so you'd see a lot of different you know obviously lots of different trees there's one particularly that's a small leaf lime ancient woodland up there which is really interesting so this is goat willow which is one of the species that grows in the wet woodland down on the on the peat here You'll, you'll be seeing different woodlands in, in other of these videos, but wet woodlands are a bit different in the species you get. So it's, it's a lot of willow, because they don't mind getting their feet wet, basically, in, in the, when they're growing. Um, and you also get a lot of birch growing on peat, because it likes the sort of acidic conditions that the, the peat creates. Um, as you can see here, the catkins that are coming out on this goat willow are absolutely gorgeous. Um, and you'll see as the season goes on, lots of different types of catkins coming out on different species of willow. Um, they're quite hard to tell apart, but you know, they're, they're lovely to look at. And goat willow is one that is quite easy to identify once you get your eye in for it. Thank you so much for um, today's walk, Louise. And um, to everyone at home, make sure that you head out on the 30th of April through to the 3rd of May for the International City Nature Challenge weekend. Download the iNaturalist app. Um, I've been recording today and I've got around 30 different species of wildlife just within this last hour's time. So just make sure that you're recording the nature out there. Um, and thanks again to Louise.